So the rest of it system is not slavery, okay? What rest of it in Haiti is, is literally two words put together. Rest in Avec, you know, from the original French, which means to stay with, essentially. And what the system of rest avec is, is that you have a child. Let's say they have too many kids, right? Let's say they have too many kids. And their parents find themselves unable to care for all of them. So what the parent will do is that they'll send usually the older kids, you know, the ones that are harder to feed, to stay with a family member or a friend or even a uh, associate, you know, someone that, that they know that's wealthier than them to stay with them, right? And generally in this system, these kids that get sent off to live with these people, now they're, they avoid starvation, they, they usually get better medical treatment, they usually get better education, you know, than their own siblings who are staying with their actual parents. And the positivity, the positive aspect of the rest of the system, or as, how it should be done, or as it's you know, intended to be done, is that the parents actually can continue to have contact with that child. From the, and the parent can come anytime be like, hey, I want my kid back. Boom, the kid goes back to the parent, right? That's the rest of the system. This narrative of calling the rest of the system slavery is actually born out of the racism that followed the Haitian earthquake that happened in 2010. So what happened in 2010 is that in 2010, um, the earthquake happens, hundreds of thousands are dead. And one of the results of that is that there's now thousands of kids flooding the streets of Haiti um, that weren't there before. Kids that are now orphaned, that, are una that, that were unfortunately now overwhelming the system in Haiti. So... The system in Haiti, again, the rest of that's the main adoption system in Haiti, the rest of the system. But unfortunately, with the earthquake, now there's not enough adults to take care of these kids. You know what I'm saying? Not, now there's not enough adults who, who are related to these kids who are able to take care of them. Secondly, they would also need the consent of the parent in order for, that, for the rest of the system to happen. So these kids who are now orphaned, they don't have anyone to consent to give off to other people. And even if they, that parent was alive, there's not enough, not, now not enough people to give these kids away to. So the issue that happened is that now these foreign, these foreigners that were flooding the country to help Haiti were now finding it difficult to adopt these kids due to Haitian law. You feel me? So, so that is the context of which these, these, these journalists, these NGOs, these government agencies were calling the rest of the system slavery. You feel me? They were coming to Haiti at its worst time, seeing all these kids in the street. You know, they're going, hey, these kids with buckets, these kids with buckets, these kids that are washing clothes in the river, these kids that are, that are you know, walking kids to school you know they're talking to these kids and going hey who are you what are you doing bing bang boom going oh my god to slave these kids are 10 12 11 years old you know they're not being paid yada 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 and foreign are seeing our foreign eyes are seeing this as slavery and and think going up to themselves oh this is a vile system you know haitians haitians aren't able to take care of these kids these kids need to be taken care of by us we need to be able to adopt them and this and this is a, a neo-colonial you know narrative of a haitian system that's now being picked up by Haitians themselves, you know, unfortunately, these, hey, there's Haitians that, that, you know, they come from, uh, they, they're born outside the country, you feel me, and they, they come to Haiti, they read these articles, they see these kids in the street, you know, and they bring their, their first world perspective with them to Haiti, you know, and not understanding that this system, this system is one of our, it's a, a Haitian traditional adoption system, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is where the, that is where the, that slavery word came from, because before, before the 2010s, before the Haitian earthquake, you didn't see this being said anywhere. No one was calling it slavery before the 2010s, before before the earthquake happened. You know, and it's especially disrespectful to the, to Haiti in our in our Haitian traditions when you call it slavery because the rest of the system was born out of slavery. You know what I'm saying? It was born out of slavery. It was born out of a system where, okay, so when Haiti becomes independent in 1804, you feel me? We fought off France, England, Spain. You feel me? And we become our own country, right? In come own country, this a country of black people who are formerly enslaved. And they're trying to set up institutions to protect themselves not only from you know future slave and slavery, but to protect themselves from any further, you know, anything that reminded them of slavery. One of those things was the adopt the rest of X system. You feel me? So the rest of X system was born out of the idea that during slavery, kids were being taken from their parents by these slavers, these slave masters, and sent to play plantations all over the colony. Kids that were never be seen again, you know, kids, kids that, that were never heard from again, parents that, you know, if the parents did become free, they'd go looking for them, they'd never find the kid again. That's what the rest of the system is born out of. That's why in the rest of the system, the biological parents are able to visit the kids, they're able to see the kid, the, the parent can take the kid at any time. That's what the rest of the system was born out of. You feel me? The, 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 the attempt to, to, to stave away this idea that, hey, your kid be taken at any time and the kid is not yours anymore. You have no say of what happens to this kid anymore. That's what the rest of the system was born out of, you feel me? So I find that it's very important to watch our language when we talk about systems that come out of second world and third world countries such as Haiti. You know, because you can't use your first world perspective and use that to transplant it onto your idea of what is a good system, what is a proper system. 
to, to care for children because all systems have problems. You feel me? We either in America here, where I am in Florida, where adoption and foster care is rife with, with trafficking, with child abuse, so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? And and it is it is scary that you know it's one thing to get to hear that from from foreigners, from people that that hate that hate black people to begin with, but then hear that same language and same vile you know method of describing rest of it, you know, describing Haitian systems coming out of our, you know, other Haitians, that, that is disrespectful. That is hurtful. Because there are, you know, because like I said, before, before the earthquake in Haiti, there was, there's lots of positive examples and positive descriptions of, of the rest of system. You feel me? Like, for example, one person um, I remember reading about, I remember reading one book called The Island Possessed. I think that book's from 1969 by a lady called um, Catherine Dunham, right? In, in that book, she was saying that in Haiti, parents of the peasant class, right, they love their children, they also love the children of everyone else, and they expect everyone to love their children also. And she, she was talking about the rest of the system and describing it, and she also remarked that, you know, it is incredible and, and remarkable in Haiti that there are no, like, bands of children on the streets. Like, there's no kids, like, just living in the streets of Haiti. And she was saying that that's crazy compared to, because everywhere else she's been in the Caribbean at the time, Jamaica and Puerto Rico, she pointed out specifically, she said that in those countries, there's, there's, there's huge groups of kids just walking around the streets. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there's also another book I read called um, Life in a Haitian Valley, I think it's called. That book was by a guy called um, Melvin Herkowitz, I think, right? And he was talking about the rest of the system. He said that it was like a token of friendship that from one person to another to, to, to give someone the charge of your kids. Because in Haiti, having children is such a great, great thing. You feel me? Like, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a saying in Haiti called um, Timun se bien malire. You feel me? Children are the treasures of the poor. Like that's how important children, like children and child and child rearing is in Haiti. That the rest of the system was considered a great honor to say, "Hey, I can't take care of my kid. I'm, a, I'm admitting that. But I think you can. I think you can do a great job, right?" And he in Mount and Mount talked about, you know, in in you know this book, Herkowitz's book. I think it's from 1937. I think, and Herkowitz was talking about how in the rest of the system that he saw from the examples that he saw specifically that you know the kids were dressed poorly, you know, but. Other than how they were dressed, the kids were generally treated the same way as the, the, the person's own kids. You feel me? They're fed the same, same schooling, so on and so forth. Um, but for a more recent example of um, the rest of the system, um, I think there's a, there was an essay written by a Miss Shani King um, in the Harvard Human Rights Journal, I think in 2012. And she actually said the rest of the system in Haiti was more beneficial than the adoption system that had been brought um, in. You know, um, she said that compared to the adoption system, the tradition, the Western adoption system, compared to the rest of X system, rest of X system actually did better in pulling children out of poverty. It did better in um, educating kids, did better in teaching kids life skills, did better in building character. And the most important thing is it maintained the relationship between the child and the parent. You feel me? Um, one more example I remember reading is um, Daddy Sherry. She's a Haitian author. author. Um, and in her, she had an essay in, called um, Colonialism of the Mind. Um, that's from, I think she wrote that in 2012, I believe, Colonialism of the Mind. And she talked about, she actually comes from a rest of it family. Um, her, her, I think she said her mother or father, maybe, maybe both of them, I forgot. But she talked about her parents actually came from a rest of it, were in a rest of it system where her grandparents sent her parents to live with other people to be raised other people. And how that actually helped her parents go further than her parents' siblings. You know, her parents were able to that um, come from the poverty class to the middle class, they're able to um, get educated more, they're able to live a more comfortable lifestyle than their own siblings were able to, you know what I'm saying? So given all these examples of positive aspects of Restavec and the history of Restavec system, it is, it is despicable to call it slavery, you know? And the second thing I remember from this video I saw, um, the girl said that the rest of the system isn't adoption, it's not, it's not foster care, like yada, 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 so don't call it that. Well, actually, under Haitian law, the rest of the system is not called the rest of the system. It's called partial adoption. Go, go on. Adoption partial. It's not called, I don't know what it's called in, in French, but in, in, in the Haitian language, it's called um, partial adoption, adoption partial, where in the Haitian law, it allowed that biological parents can remain, maintain contact with their children, and this was, and this was recognized, you feel me? So in Haiti, when you were when you adopted when someone adopted somebody, you the parent still had the right to visit and take back the kid if they saw fit. You feel me? That's so the rest of the system was actually a part of Haitian law, not just traditionally, but under but you know I mean Haitian life, not just traditionally, but under the law, you know what I'm saying? And this and that didn't change until June twenty twelve when foreign adoptions were, were actually made legal for the first time. You know, were made fully legal where foreigners could adopt Haitian children fully and leave the country with these kids. You know what I'm saying? 
So to say it's not adoption, yes, it's adoption. It's Haitian adoption. It's called partial adoption in Haiti. So that's another ignorant statement that was made in that video. Um, the last thing I'm gonna say is this. I think it's a very unfair, again, unfair thing to try to use Western systems in a Western perspective to view other places such as Haiti, you feel me? A Haiti which has a very different history and a very different culture from the America or France or England or whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? It is unfair. Because when, when you say, okay, rest I is slavery, okay, what do you have, what can you provide? What are your options? What are your options are you giving these people? What options are you giving these people? Okay, you're gonna give them Western adoption? Well, Western adoption is way worse in Haiti. Western adoptions led to more children going missing in, in, in instances of human trafficking than anything else. Than anything else. Like there are so many examples of people that after the 2012 that after after 2012 when that law was changed in Haiti have used adoption to steal children from people and never hear from them again. Like there's like as of right now like there's right now there's a campaign in Haiti to try and find children because so many kids were being snatched up, snatched up, snatched up after the earthquake. And now these parents are like, whoa, I'm doing better now. It's been 10 years since the earthquake. I haven't heard nor seen from my kid in, in a decade. So where are my kid? Where's my kid? You feel me? And just so many examples. I can, I can, think, of, I can think of Laura Silsby. Um, Laura Silsby, S-I-L-S-B-Y. Look her up. She was actually, um, this was actually mentioned in the, the WikiLeaks from 2016, um, where the Clintons actually helped to get her, her sentence reduced for human trafficking. From, I think 15 years to time served, you know, um, or another person, Douglas Perlitz, P E R L I T Z. I think he was he was accused and found guilty of raping um, and trafficking children. Or another guy, Daniel P. A. Um, I think he's Hispanic, P Y E, Daniel P. A. He was also trafficking kids and raping kids, you know what I'm saying? So, no system is perfect, you feel me? The, the rest of that system has its faults, of course. No system is fucking perfect, you know, there's abuses, you know, sometimes the kids aren't take aren't aren't going to school like, like they promised the parents. Sometimes these kids aren't being fed as well as, you know, sometimes these kids are being made to do chores that the regular kids would never be made to do. Fair enough. Fair enough. I can, if you want to talk about the, the issues with the rest of the system, talk about those issues. Say how things can improve, you know what I'm saying? But don't just call it slavery. Don't call it evil. Don't call it such and such. You know, don't put a neo, don't put a racist, a racist tinge on a traditional, traditional system, you know, and then don't provide any real solutions. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it was me, I would say, if you're gonna do the rest of X system, have it so that there's more regulation to it. Have it so that the government has to be involved with like, hey, making sure these kids are going to school, make sure these kids are getting fed properly, make sure these kids are getting um, clothed properly, you know? Like, make sure there's more regu regu regulation, regu ah, <laughs> tongue tied. Make sure there's more re regulation to it so that, you know, these kids aren't aren't just, like, like aren't glorified servants, you know what I'm saying? I would say before I go is, I remember this song growing up that my parents used to play all the time by Auntie De Rose, right? Um, and in the song, Auntie De Rose said, um, Puki, Puki, Puno Kupi, Salot, Pei, Fin Vegete, right? <laughs> and what I'm saying is, like, why do we need to copy systems that other countries have rejected? You know what I'm saying? And I think this is very pertinent to this, this um, situation where people are saying, Rest of X system sucks, Rest of X system this, Rest of X, rest of X system that. But what you're trying to introduce to Haiti is a system that's not, that's not working. And how do you expect a system that's not working in a first world country like the U.S.? How do you expect that system to work in Haiti? You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather we improve the system we have now, improve the rest of the system, which is our, tra our own traditional homegrown, homegrown adoption system, and improve that. Make that one better. Don't just, don't just, don't just say repeat what white people are telling you about Haiti. Don't repeat what white people are saying about the rest of the system. Like, think for yourself.